ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a burglary detail. You get a call from a citizen that a burglary is in progress. You know the exact location. Your job, stop it. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, June 14th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of burglary detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. We were on our way back from a show up, and it was 11.47 p.m. when we got to room 45, burglary squad room. You want to get started on the report? Yeah, all right. Well, I should be glad to get home. I'm tired. Yeah. Here. Thanks. Mm. You seen the new building yet? What? Seen the new building yet? Yeah, part of it. Yeah, sure is great. They thought of just about everything. Mm. That lab looks like something out of a movie. Mm -hmm. It's all steel, tile. Lee Jones is going to flip. Well, it's going to feel to have all that room. Well, it's going to be great to have the lab in the same building, anyway. Mm -hmm. Burglary Friday. Yeah, that's right. What's that address? No, well, don't try to stop him. No, right. Goodbye. Get your coat. Huh? It's a burglary. Yeah. The guy's there now. Frank and I left the city hall, code three. A few blocks from the place, we cut off the red light and siren. The address was a large drugstore located at the corner of Olive and Santee Streets. We parked the car in the middle of the block and walked the rest of the way. The store was dark when we arrived, but the front window had been smashed and the sidewalk was covered with broken glass. Uh, stay waiting here. Don't go messing things up. We're police officers. Hello, oh, I've been expecting you. I'm the one that telephoned you. I'm Arthur Munsey. All right, sir. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Hello, hello. How are you doing, sir? Hello. Uh, took you long enough to get here. The thief's gone. Where'd he go, sir? He just took off, that's all. Took off. Mm, which way? Uh, down there. There, right down the street. Do you have a car? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see one. Mm -hmm. Well, if he did, he didn't drive it. He went away, down the street, you see? See, that way. Now, how long ago did he leave? Right after I called you. I come back here to keep an eye on him. He crashed through the window and took off. Running just as fast as he could, down that way, the street. What did he look like? Can you tell us? Sure. I got a good look at him. Real good when he come out through the window. He kind of laid on the sidewalk for a minute. I, like it was hurt. Right right after that, he ran off. All right, sir. Now, if you give us a description. Oh, you want it to the, just the same as I give it to the other fellows? Who's that? The other cops, I give them a good one. I told them all about the thief. Where are they now, do you know? They took out after him. They got in the car and drove off looking for him. How long ago was that? Right away. They drove away right behind the man. It wouldn't surprise me a bit, but what they called him, uh, they was right behind him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now then, you want to know what, uh, what happened? That's huh? right. I thought you would. Well, uh, I was on the way home to the movie down the street. I go there every Tuesday night. They got dishes, you know. What's that? Giving away dishes. Yeah. I've been going since they started. Night was soup bowl night. Mm-hmm. Already got five of them. Tonight fills out my step. Yes, sir. How about the burglary? Hmm? The burglary. Would you tell us about it? Oh, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> oh, good. I get to talk and the bass gets loose. You to stay on the track. Yes, sir. Well, then. <clears throat> now, uh... Yeah. Oh, where was I? You were on the way home from the movie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I was just walking along. I got here by the drugstore, and I heard this noise. First off, it kind of scared me. I, I didn't expect it, you know. Yes, sir. What was it? The noise? That's right. Glass. A whole lot of glass being broken. Mm -hmm. I turned around, and right away, I knew it would come from the drugstore. So I went over to take a look. Yeah. What do you think I saw? I wouldn't know, sir. Would I take a guess? Look, mister, why don't you just tell us? This fellow was laying right on the floor, right in the middle of the floor, the glass all over. I guess he fell on one of the showcases. He sure broke it all up. Mm-hmm. Just laying there, not moving at all. Then, all of a sudden, quick like, he jumped up, and that's when he saw me, standing there looking right at him. He saw me. Yes, sir. 
Right off. I knew he didn't have no right in the store. I knew it right away. Mm-hmm. You know how I knew? Yes, sir, I have an idea. You? No, I don't have an idea. Well, then, the light wasn't on. No, sir, there wasn't any light on. So I knew he was a thief. That's when I went to call you. Mm -hmm. Use the phone booth there, see? At across the street, able to keep my eye on the place all the time. Yeah. Come back here to make sure it didn't get out. And first, I thought the guy was gone. I, you see, I, I couldn't see him at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then he came out from behind the counter, back in the back of the place, and I could see he was hurt. Something was wrong with his arm. He held it the, uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of like this. See? Like there was something wrong? Yes, sir. He was trapped. No way to get out. With his arm hurt, he couldn't climb out. So what do you think he did? Well, I wouldn't know. Your turn. Go ahead, Louis, please. Started running, come right at the window, running as fast as he could. Crash right through it. Broke clean through it. Landed here on the sidewalk. There, see, see? Right on the sidewalk. Glass all around him. Mm -hmm. Laid there for a minute, and then he got up and took off down the street. He was hurt, though, bad. I could see where he'd hit his head on the window, all cut up. Would you know the man if you saw him? Oh, oh you bet I would. I'd know him any place. We'd like to have you come downtown, look at some pictures. Sure, sure. Anything I can do, you just name it. All right. I'd score to settle with that guy myself. I want to see you get it. Yeah, so we understand. Be ashamed of himself. Whole thing's his fault. Never would have happened if it hadn't come crashing out that window. What's that? My personal reason for wanting to see you get him. Hmm? He made me drop my soup bowl. We got a complete description of the suspect on the local broadcast and an APB were put out. Arrangements were made for the witness to be taken to the city hall to check through the mug books, and then Frank and I started to canvass the area. 12.20 a.m. You think he made it? I don't know. The way Arthur Muncy put it, he was hurt pretty bad. Couldn't get too far. Yeah. Want to pull up? Let's check that alley. All right. No, it doesn't go all the way through. Mm-hmm. Let's get out. I'll cover the far side, bro. Right. How about it? All right, come on up. Come on, we can see you. Uh, all right. I, I get up, don't shoot. Just stand don't there, shoot. stand there where we can see you. I, I, I got my hands up. I'm not going to cause any trouble. I give up. I give up. Now, please don't. All right, shoot, walk please. out here. Walk out here. Keep your hands where we can see them. I'll check them, Joe. All right, turn uh, around. Turn around. Put your hands against the wall. All right, I, I'm doing just what you say. Just like you tell me now. All right, he's clean. All right, turn around. Come on, put your hands back. No, no, look, please don't put any handcuffs on me. Please don't. My wrist is broken. I can't do it. I can't do it. All right, stand. stand still. Put your hands behind your head and walk out toward the street. All right. <laughs> Get me a doctor, will you? I don't feel good. I think I hurt my head. Sure. No, I, I'm telling you the truth. You can see yourself. I think I hurt it. Come on, keep walking. No, I don't feel good. I got... Awful pain in my head. Yeah, well, it's going to get worse. The suspect was taken to Georgia Street Emergency Hospital for treatment. We identified him as Leroy Ernest Finch, 27 years old. He had a record listing two convictions of burglary along with several misdemeanor arrests. His mugshot was shown to the witness, and we got a positive identification. After emergency treatment, Frank and I were able to talk to him. How about it, Finch? Make a statement? About what? A burglary. You guys are forgetting something. What's that? I'm the one who's sick. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think about any burglary. That's a nice try, Finch, but it's not going to work. You better tell me what you're talking about. We got a witness who saw you break into a drugstore tonight. He's willing to go to court with it. Well, then you better get a new witness, because the one you got is all worn out. Yeah? Yeah, that's right. How'd you get cut up? A couple of guys tried to rob me. I didn't like the idea, and they put the screws to me. You expect that story to stand up? You've got to prove it didn't happen. We can. Well, then be my guest. Why don't you save us all a lot of time and cop out here? Well, that'd make things real easy on you, wouldn't it? That'd it help. Well, it's too bad I can't go along with you boys, but I'm not going to carry a beef I didn't build. You want us to believe that, don't you? I don't care what you believe. I'm telling you the truth. I was mugged tonight. A couple of guys took my wallet, beat me up, and that's the way it is. There's nothing you can do to change it. Yeah, we'll see. Now, if I knew about any burglaries, I'd tell you there's no reason not to. I can think of a couple. Spell them. You've fallen twice before. I thought we'd get around to that. Well, you guys better take another look. You can't bring up my record in court. You're going to have to make this on your own, and I'm giving you nothing. It's a little late, isn't it? Huh? You already have. That night, 
that morning, the suspect was removed to the prison ward at General Hospital. He was reported in good condition and was expected to recover in time to stand trial. Frank and I worked with the district attorney's office in preparation of the case. A check of the drugstore by Harlan Stahl of latent print detail had turned a complete set of usable prints. Blood stains found on the floor of the place were of the same type as Finch's. Particles of cloth on the transom where entry had been made matched the suit the suspect was wearing. According to the district attorney's office, the case was complete and the conviction was assured. Thursday, June 16th, we attempted to re-question the suspect, but he was sullen and uncooperative. 6.47 p.m., Frank and I got back to the office. How about some to eat? All right, where do you want to go? Mm, how about that taco place on Broadway? We were there yesterday. Good food, prices are in line. I don't know, I think you could live on beans and tacos, couldn't you? Sometime I'd like to try. Yeah, I get it. Burgery Friday. How long ago? Right. Now we'll be right over. Your dinner's gonna have to wait tonight. Huh? Leroy Finch. Yeah? He just broke jail. We left the office and drove over to General Hospital. An immediate warning had gone out to all officers in the city carrying Finch's description. As far as we knew, he was still wearing hospital clothes and wouldn't be too difficult to spot. We went up to the 13th floor and met with a guard who had been on duty. I see you went out this way. 13 floors to the street, huh? Not easy to believe. How'd he make it? Only as we can figure, he tore the bed sheets into strips, braided them together, yeah. worked at one of the bars until he could slip through. Mm -hmm. he must have looped the sheets around the other bars and lowered himself. Hmm. How far could he go that way? Mm, two stories. After that, he must have rested on the ledge while he pulled the sheets down after him. Kept going until he got to the street. Anybody see him on the way down, do you know? Well, we're checking now. Not likely. If there had been anyone, they'd let us know. Yeah. Sure, hate to see that guy on the loose. The way he talked, he's going to cause a lot of trouble. Any chance he had help getting out? No, he's the only one in the room. Didn't have any visitors. Door was locked. Mm -hmm. You mentioned any friends in town? Anybody he might go to? No, but the only thing he talked about was the beef against him. All the time saying that he was going to beat it. How he was going to blow your case sky high. Yeah. He was sure of himself. Said you'd never get him into court. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. It looks like he might have been right. It isn't going to change. He hasn't beat it. Yeah? He just postponed it. For the rest of the night, the area was subjected to an intense search. All people in the vicinity were questioned. Cars going into and out of the blockaded section were checked. At 7.30 the next morning, a search was called off. Apparently, Leroy Finch had made good his escape before the warning had been sounded. For the next two days, Frank and I checked everybody listed in his package. Friends and relatives were placed under surveillance. All known associates and places he was known to frequent were checked. Word went out to informants for possible leads. Every step was being taken to bring Leroy Finch back into custody. Sunday, June 19th, we got word that Finch had been seeing a woman just before his arrest. Her name didn't appear in any of the reports. Frank and I drove out to see her. I guess this is it. Well, what about the back? Oh, this is the only entrance. All right, I'll get the door. I'll try it again. Yeah? Who is it? I'd like to see Miss Wall, please. Who is it? I'd like to talk to you. It's important. All right. Come on. You think he's here? I don't know. Better be ready for him. Yeah. Come on up. What do you want to see me about? You alone here? No. Why? You mind if we check? No. Go ahead. Come on in the living room. What are you looking for? We're police officers. You know a man named Leroy Finch? Yeah. Okay, Joe. I could have told you that. Go on in. All right. Sit down. I'll just have some coffee. Looking at the Sunday funnies. Yeah. You've got to excuse the way the place looks. I wasn't expecting company. It's all right. Want you a cup of coffee? No, thanks. How about you? All right. What do you want to know about Roy? When did you see him last? Oh, let me think. This is a week, ten days ago. Not since, huh? Uh-uh. You heard from him at all? No. What's this all about? What's Roy done? It's all been in the papers. Outside of the funnies, I could print a blank. What's he done? We want to talk to him. Well, like that, huh? That's right. What do you know about him? Uh -uh. Nice guy. Good spender. He's been out a couple of times. Dinner, dancing, nothing special. Mm -hmm. Dress is good. Looks nice. Wears too much padding in his coat. Outside of that, he... Looks like something in a magazine. Yeah. Where'd you meet him? Cafeteria downtown. Mm -hmm. I was in there eating one night. The place was pretty crowded. And he 
came over and asked if it'd be okay if he sat at my table. I told him, yeah. Mm -hmm. Finished eating, and we went out and had a couple of drinks. How long ago was that? Oh, let me see. Uh, just a couple of months. Did you ever talk about any of his friends? Hmm. You know where he lived? I don't think he had one place. Kept moving around. You know, one hotel this week, some other place and that. Just kept moving. Where was he staying the last time you saw him? I don't know. Some place down on Pico, I think. They can't give us an address, huh? No. All right, Miss Wall. We'll leave you one of our cards. We'd appreciate it if you could call us in the event Finch gets in touch with you. Well, sure. I hear anything, I'll call you right away. Oh, excuse me a minute, huh? Go ahead. We can find the door. Thanks. Hello? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Uh, Mr. Friday? Yeah. Your office. They want to talk to you. Thank you. It's Friday. When? We'll be right over. Thank you very much, Miss Wall. Don't mention it. Let's go. Yeah. What do you got? They found Finch. Yeah. He's been hiding in a house in Highland Park. Is he there now? No, he left about an hour ago. Who's the place belong to? I don't know. If we want to talk to him, we better step on it. Yeah. He shot them both. Street Receiving Hospital, where the latest victims had been taken. We talked to the doctor in attendance. He identified the couple as Mr. and Mrs. Fred Gilner. He went on to say that both of them had suffered serious gunshot wounds. Mrs. Gilner had been hit in the left shoulder and in the neck, while her husband had been shot in the arm and chest. The man was on the operating table at the time, but the doctor said we could talk to the woman briefly. Frank and I went into the treatment room. Mrs. Gilner. Mrs. Gilner? Yes? We're police officers, ma'am. like to talk to you if you feel up to it. I guess so. I guess it's all right. We'd like you to look at a picture and see if it's the man who shot you. Where is it? Right here. I'll hold it for you. Is this the man? It's hard to see it. Do the best you can, please. Yes. That's him. He's the one. Can you tell us what happened? How's Fred? Have you heard how my husband is? We don't know yet, ma'am. Shot Fred, too, you know. Shot us both. Now, can you tell us what happened? Came into the house last Thursday night. Came in. Yes, ma'am. Tried to rob us. Fred surprised him in the closet. Guess he was trying to steal some clothes. It was Thursday? Yes, night. All right. You can go on, please. Had Fred's gun. Must have found it in the bureau. Had it pointed right at us. Waving it around. Yes, ma'am. Made us stay in the house. Three days. Kept us prisoner. Three days with the gun. Mm-hmm. Then tonight, Fred tried to get the gun away from him. There was a fight. A terrible fight. Him and Fred. Fight. Do you want to stop, Miss Gilner? No. Not much more. He shot Fred. Cold blood shot him. Then me kept us prisoner and shot him. Awful thing, shot. All right, Miss Gilmer. We'll do what we can. Yeah. It's the best thing, rest. The best thing. You want to check the doctor? Yeah. Excuse me? Yes? Where can we find Dr. Savin? I think I saw him a couple of minutes ago. He went into treatment room number three. All right, we're going. Yes, he's alone. Thank you. Doc? Oh, yeah, Joe. Frank, come on in. Thank you. Uh, How'd it go? Tough one. I think he's going to live. That's good. Hope he feels the same way. What do you mean? Bullet severed the spinal cord. Yeah. He'll never walk again. A check was made at the Gilner house, and their automobile was found to be missing. From papers in the house, we got a make and license number. A supplemental broadcast was gotten out carrying the information. The description of Leroy Finch was broadcast to all policemen in Southern California every 30 minutes. At the end of each transmission, the officers were warned that the suspect was armed and was to be considered extremely dangerous. Border stations were notified, and the checkpoints into Nevada were alerted. 
Bus and railroad stations were covered and airline terminals were placed under surveillance. Roadblocks were set up on highways into and out of Los Angeles. If Leroy Finch was still in the city, every precaution was taken to prevent his escape. Thirty-six hours went by without word. Tuesday, June 21st, Frank and I checked into the office. I'll check the book. Go. Friday. Yeah, Ed. I'm trying to reach you guys. Where you been? We just got back from 77. What's the matter? You better check with the skipper. Huh? That car Finch was driving? Yeah. They just found it. The vehicle had been found by a motorcycle officer on a side street in the Hollywood area. As soon as he'd made sure of the identification, he'd notified Captain Bernard, and then he'd staked out on the car. Four teams of officers had been dispatched to the scene, and a search of the area was started. Frank and I went down the hall to Chief Thad Brown's office, and we checked with Captain Bernard. He told us to leave for the scene immediately and take charge of the investigation. We went back to the squad room before leaving. You want to sign this out? Yeah. Thank you. Burglary Friday. Oh, yeah. Speak up a little, can't hear you. What's that? No, I got it. All right, we'll be right there. What do you got? It was Hazel Wool. Finch's girlfriend? Yeah, he just walked in. We notified Captain Bernard what happened, and along with him and two teams of men from robbery detail, we left for the woman's address. The building was covered completely, and Frank and I went up to the front door. Joe, honey. Oh, Chuck. What do you want? I'd like to see you. I, I'm kind of busy right now, Joe. Can you come back later? Finch must be with her. Yeah. I'm leaving town. It won't take very long. Just a minute. Okay. Follow me up and take it easy. All right. Hi, Joe. I didn't expect to see you. Got a call from New York. Got to get back there right away. Thought I'd come over and tell you. Sorry about that date for tomorrow night. Oh, it's okay. I understand. All alone, huh? Yeah, but I was just getting ready to go out. Anybody I know? I don't think so. Friends out in the valley asked me over for dinner. Well, well, I sure wish I could keep that date tomorrow. So do I. Hey, I wonder if I could have a drink of water. Yeah. Guess so. I'll get it. Here, I'll come with you. Here's a glass. Thanks. Where is he? Bedroom. You alone? Yeah. He's got a gun. Why don't you stay here? All right. Be careful. Thanks a lot. Well, I'll be running along. Okay. All right, Finch. We know you're in the bedroom. Throw that gun out and you follow it. Come on, Finch. Throw out the gun. You come and get me, cop. We can wait a lot longer than you can, Finch. Well, let's see. We'll take the building apart if we have to. Go ahead. I'm not going to walk out of here. All right. You called it. Frank? Yeah. Get downstairs. Ask him to bring up the gas equipment. Okay. Watch the fight, coming out. All right, come on, Vince, get up. Now, leave me alone, cop. Leave me alone. Come on, on your feet. I can't. I'm hurt. I can't get up. You're not hurt that bad. It's just a shoulder wound. I am, too. I, I, I don't. I'm going to die. I, I know it. Come on, get I'm going to die. You're pretty sure of that, aren't you? Yeah, I, I can feel it. You got it wrong, Finch. Huh? It won't be that easy. <laughs> you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On October 4th, trial was held in Department 97, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Leroy Ernest Finch was tried and convicted of burglary in the first degree. Escape, a felony. Assault with intent to commit murder, two counts. And grand theft auto, one count. In view of his past record, and because of the viciousness of his crimes, he was sentenced to life imprisonment in the state penitentiary without possibility of parole. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Hey, Joe, 